Howdy folks! Thanks for joining me again today for another account tutorial. Last time we created and tested a handler for signing in a user. This handler accepts and validates an email and password in a JSON request body. Let's now take a look at our old progress diagram to see what we'll work on today. We're going to add the ability to sign in the user from the service layer and the repository layer. Recall that last time we created this post sign in handler here. This will reach out to our user service layers sign in method, which will then reach out to our repository layers find by email method. This find by email will look for a row for a user with the email supplied in this handler and to this service. It will take that email and reach out to our Postgres database and look for a row for that user. That user will then have a password stored, and if you remember we stored that password as the hash password, and then also with a salt, the salt and that password were separated by a period. So anyway, we'll return that whole thing back to the repository here, and that user will be returned all the way back to this sign-in service. This sign-in service will then compare the supplied password from the JSON with the password stored in the database, and it will run that password through the salt, which remember I said we had stored in the database here, and so it will compare the supplied password with the password in the database. If that matches, we'll then return the user all the way down to the handler layer, and the user gets the JSON response they desire. Of course, we already did the JSON part last time, so today we'll just work on the sign-in service and the find by email in the user repository here. On another note, I will continue to create unit tests for all of our services and handlers, but I'm not going to include them in this tutorial. You can go to the repository on GitHub and check out the unit tests. I feel that they're just taking up a disproportionate amount of time. If I do come up with something new that I think is interesting or where we'll learn something, sure, I'll include a unit test. But for now, let's just forego that. I did want to do it in the first place because so many people say, and remember to do your tests, and sometimes it's harder than actually writing the stupid code. So I wanted to just show you an example and give you some confidence to scaffold out your own tests. But hopefully you get the picture, it's getting repetitive, so let's move on from that. Let's go ahead and work on this find by email interface. I'm back in the repository now. Inside of the account folder, we have our various layers, and inside of the model layers where we store our expectations or interfaces. So that's right here. Let's go down to user repository and let's add the method signature for finding a user by email. To find a user by email, we will simply supply the email to this method, and of course, with the context as well, as we always do. If this user is found, it will be returned as a user reference as the first parameter, or we will have an error returned in the case that that user cannot be found, or there is some other database error. You'll now see that we have some problems here, and that is that our actual Postgres implementation of the user repository does not have this method, and we also have a mock user repository for testing, which does not implement this method. I'm going to go ahead and implement this method, and it's mock for you now. I did say that we're not going to do user tests, but let's just add this to get this warning to go away. So let's go to our mocks and our user repository, and at the bottom, Let's add this method. Maybe I should add these in alphabetical order. Oh well, go ahead and do it for yourself. Here is the mock implementation of find by email. Go ahead and take a look at this and add it yourself. Now let's go to our repository layer and our PG or Postgres user repository. And let's also add the concrete implementation for finding our user in our Postgres database. Here is the method. I have an error. Let me figure out what this is. And the problem was that I'm using p uppercase g user repository in the name and the struct definition here. And I simply brought it in with a lowercase g. So silly mistake. I'll have to update the code inside of the tutorial to make sure that's right. Inside of this method, we simply create a select query with an email placeholder to accept the email provided to the method. 
We then use the get context method on SQLX, which will take this query and populate the email into this argument. And if it if a user is fetched, it will be populated onto this user, which is a model.user here. If there's an error, we're just going to return a not found error, although we could check to make sure it's not some sort of internal or network error or some other database error. But I'm being a little lazy here and we'll just always return a not found error. And in the case that a user is successfully found, we will return that user. Now that we have this find by ID, or sorry, find by email method, we can reach out to it from within our service layer, and that is our user service here, and the sign in method, which we've yet to complete. We reach out to the user repository find by email, which I said we'll do. If there's an error, we'll return a new authorization error, although this also I think was returning, no, it was returning a not found error. But I guess we'll just, in general, hide that from the client. That's what I commented here. If we get that user successfully, we then want to take the fetched user's password and compare it with the supplied user's password. The supplied user is passed to the method. If there's an error comparing the passwords, meaning some sort of error in the method, that will be an internal server error to let us know something just went wrong with our method or function here. Another case would be if our match doesn't work. So this match is a Boolean. So if the supplied password passed through the hashing algorithm with the salt does not produce the same password in the database, we don't have a match. In that case, the user hasn't entered a proper password and we return, a, we return an authorization error. If all goes well, we're going to copy or move the properties from this fetched user onto you here and then return nil for an error. I also recommend that you check out this passwords function here. Let's go ahead and actually do that now. The passwords function is in the service layer. Uh, I move my mouse quickly, it's down here. And this compare passwords, I alluded to it, but it basically takes the password from the database and it will split it. We stored the hashed password and the salt separated by a period. So what we'll do is get the second half of that. You see we have the array or slice element one here. And then we're just going to try to rehash the supplied password with that salt from the database and make sure it equals the hashed password in the database here. And that's why we take the first part of this splitted string here. So it's not too terribly complex. We went over this before, but that's what we're doing when we compare the passwords. Let's go ahead and try to run this application. So let's go to the terminal. Let's cd up one directory into the project root. And let's run docker compose up. Okay, I don't see any clear warnings or errors. That's good. Let's go ahead and go to Postman and try to create a new user and then try to sign in that user. I already have tabs open for signing up and signing in a user. Remember that we a very long time ago sent our base URL, set our base URL to malcorp.test, not trying to hide our evil like some other companies. And in the JSON body, let's just make an email with guy01 and a valid password. Let's hope, I'm using a different database now, so let's hope this user doesn't already exist. And we send and we get an ID and refresh token. The next thing we want to do is try to use this same email and password to sign in the user. Let's send this. And it would appear to be working. I'm going to open up PG admin and let's just make sure that we have a guy01 here. In our users table, we do in fact have a guy01. And just to prove that this is working, Let's reopen Postman, and let's maybe do a guy02. Uh, we'll sign in, and hopefully it fails. Actually, that's a good test. Authorization, invalid email and password combination. That's great. Let's sign them up. And now let's try to sign them in. And just for kicks, let's also go to PG Admin, and let's make sure that that new user exists. And here they are. Great.
We now have the ability to sign up and sign in users. This was quite an effort, especially since we added unit tests and spent a great deal of time on architecture, but I've learned a lot in the process and hope you have as well. Next time we'll create our second middleware, which will be used to extract the user from our ID token. You might recall that at the very beginning of the tutorial, we created a me handler. Let's go to the diagram. We created this get me handler here. I created this me handler in isolation of the service and repository layers deliberately. I did this so that we could learn how to unit test this handler layer and its methods individually. But now I want to connect this me handler up with other layers and I want to also use a middleware to extract the user's ID token. We sort of mocked this for our unit tests of the me handler. Now we're actually going to implement this and this will allow us to later on, for example, update our user's image or our user's details in their profile. I hope you're as excited for the next one as I am. Until next time, ciao.